material and we're going to do it in an hour. And our part of the bargain is we're going to not go off on tangents and rant as much as we normally would. And in return, we ask that you save your questions to the end and hopefully we won't go over time and we actually will have time for questions. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, I'm Jess Humble, uh, I work for Thought Studios, uh, I was the co-author of this book, and my job is to rant at people. Um, and I'm Bhattarajal Janak Raman, uh, I work at Studios as well. Um, I'm a developer, uh, well, recently I've been playing more of a product owner role, but that's just the past few months. Uh, I've been with ThoughtWorks for about uh, 11 years now, and most of that I've been doing code, writing code as either a Java or a Ruby developer. I'm working with some pretty big, hairy automation test suites as a part of that, so. That's me. And come and sit at the front, and then we don't have to shout so loud. So, um, you probably used to a bit loud. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to talk today about how to create high quality acceptance tests, uh, but more importantly, how to make your acceptance test suite maintainable. Because it's one thing to create acceptance test suites, making, keeping them maintainable over time at reasonable cost is the hard bit, it turns out. And all <coughs> problems ultimately, the, the practices and principles to achieve this are well known, but they're hard. And what particularly is difficult is cultural stuff and team stuff, so we'll be addressing that because that's really important. And then finally there'll be a section on managing test data, because test data is often complex and poorly understood. So if you only take away four things today, they should be this. Quality is everybody's responsibility. Quality is not the responsibility of the testers, it's everyone's responsibility. Um, test suites that are maintainable are created and curated continuously by developers and testers and customers, in fact, working collaboratively throughout the life cycle of the project. You need to treat your test code with the same love and care and attention as your production code. And finally, taking story level tests and automating them is not a good basis for creating a suite of maintainable automated acceptance test suites. So, uh, who's seen this diagram? Okay, a few of you. So, Brian Marrick dis divided tests up along two axes, whether they support programming or whether they critique the project on one axis, on the other axis whether they're technology facing and business facing, and all the kinds of tests you could possibly run fall into this quadrant. So at the bottom left, technology te facing tests that support programming are your unit tests, your system tests. These are tests written by developers to validate that the system, that the code they are writing behaves in the way they expect. And the only way that I know to create maintainable suites of unit tests is through test-driven development. 